Okay, number 13 of Public Ministry or Soul Winning Lessons. And last week we concluded with the gospel, what it was, according to the scriptures. Now we're going to move over to Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. We've got a person captivated, that he's a sinner, that he can't do anything when it comes to his soul. He's helpless. He's going to hell. He's got to believe these things. And there's no easy way for a man to get saved. There has to be crucial steps. Any way along the line, they don't believe that Jesus is God. They don't believe that Jesus is able to save them. They don't believe the gospel. And they don't believe what we're going to talk about today. You can't get them to save a prayer. And I'm sorry to say that there are people out there, the removal of salvation, the removal of the blood. You're good, we're good, I'm good, everybody's good. Don't you think you'd be happy in heaven with God? Say this prayer, good, you're saved. Now I move on to the next one. Look how many people I got saved this week. And that's not a perfect illustration of the VBS. Let's get all the kids in. Look how many kids we've had. Look at all the entertainment. Look at all the fun we had. Look at all the bags of candy. Look at all the, the face painting, the hair coloring. Look at all the junk. Look at all the slides. Look at the water slide. Look at the teeter-totter. Look at all. Oh, there was such a great time of storytelling. Look at the pretty crabs that they get to take home to their family. And what about the Bible? Oh, let's see. A week worth of VBS. Five days. Five minutes, maybe ten minutes of Bible, fifty minutes out of the whole week. That's the same, if not less, amount of time that a Christian child gets in a Sunday school class once a week. And this child wanted to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior amongst the entertainment of the world. Yet was the gospel explained to that child? Was explained to him who Jesus is and what he's able to do? Was sin explained? And we're moving to Romans chapter 10 verse 9. That, if, conditional. There is nothing to Calvinism. God forces you nowhere. God gives you a free will. Keep your place there if you want to go to John 3.36. I'll go there. You, you can go there too. We'll keep your place in Romans 10. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. That's good. Positive. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's not good. That's that if. you If you can believe or if you don't believe not. You believe not. So if thou I'm talking to some, I mean, Romans 10, 9, you can put it in the hands of the sinner and say, you read this, if thou, and that will address the person. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Confession. Lord Jesus. Not my sweet Jesus, any Jesus. There's another Jesus. This is the Jesus that you're going to make Lord of your life. This is Jesus who is God, capital L. You got to confess it with your mouth. You got to openly say, I am saying that Jesus is able to save my soul. And not only that, and shalt believe in thy heart. In the, not head, not filling with head knowledge here. It's what your heart believes. That's who you are. That God has raised him from the dead. Oh, resurrection. That's the third part of the gospel we talked about last week. You've got to explain the resurrection in order for someone to get saved because they've got to believe with their heart that God has the power after Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures. After he was buried, God raised him from the dead three days and three nights. According to the scriptures. That's a must. Thou shalt be saved. 
So the gospel has to be evident. It has to be present before we get to Romans 10 as we did our study. The gospel came first. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to scripture. Now let's get to the heart of man, the sinner. So Romans 10, 9, thou shalt be saved if you believe in your heart the resurrection of Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. You got to acknowledge you're a sinner. You got to acknowledge that there is nothing you can do. It has all been done and finished upon by Jesus Christ, God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him, believeth, shall not perish. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life. Romans 10.10 10. For with the heart, leaning verse 9, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's a heart and mouth. It's got to come from the heart. You got to have confession from the heart. And again, it's a heart issue. Salvation is never, I think, I thought. It's heartfelt. It's sincere. Sincerely and truly. No imitation. It has to be the inward faith in Christ. That is with all the heart. The belief must not be only a, a mental agreement, but a belief that brings the whole man into the loving trust and obedience to Christ. Now salvation is very simple. When you go through the gospel and what we've done right now, and he believes that that is it. And he honors. Man believe it. Believe or unbelief. And unbelief is no salvation. No animal can do what we just said. No infant child can say if he can't even talk. With my heart, I believe Jesus read. No, no, no. I think this babble, babble, pee, and give me food. And that's where you get the godparents come in. I will stand up for this child, for their heart and mouth to confess that. No, that's not it. You can't find anywhere in the Bible about godparents and salvation. It doesn't happen. I'm going to safely say, and I could be wrong. My kids got saved at four years old. So I'll say four. Any child under four years old, and there could be exceptions, has no knowledge of their heart and understanding. Probably what even death is. Never mind the resurrected by God for sin. You got to acknowledge you're a sinner. You got to acknowledge there's a hell. You have to acknowledge there's God. And without God and Jesus Christ, there is no hope. And animals, can, as much as wonderful as animals are, they can't do that. Unto righteousness. I have and still to this day have no righteousness of myself. It's not me. Now in the Old Testament, you could read in the Psalms and the men, their righteousness, my righteousness, but that was the law. We're not under the law. My righteousness is not my righteousness at all. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's not what I've done. 
believeth unto righteousness. That's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone through the gospel. And the fact is that God did raise him from the dead. That the righteousness is Jesus, the gospel, and God. I hope you didn't skip over the gospel when you're dealing with somebody. I hope you didn't skip over hell. I hope you didn't skip over Jesus Christ, who he is. Again, with the mouth, communicating, vocal, with words. Now, the day that I got saved, I knelt down at my grandma's coffee table. And I outwardly asked Jesus Christ from my mouth to save my soul. I don't remember what the words were. I don't remember. That was a Saturday. Sunday, the next day, the pastor made some, I don't remember completely, made some kind of announcement, and I stood up, and I said to the church yesterday, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. That's my mouth, professing, communicating, vocal words. I have believed with my heart, and I am confessing with my mouth. And that afternoon after church, I went home to my dad. And I told my dad, I said, Dad, you're going to hell. And a little thing there, but that was the mouth confessing Jesus Christ. And if you got someone who says they're saved and has never opened their mouth about Jesus, the works after salvation, according to James. If there was no heart, and there's no mouth. Possibility there's no salvation. Because you've got to have both. Both verse 9 and 10. You've got to have the mouth. you got to have the heart. you got to have the heart. And you've got to have the mouth. Now the confession. That you have put all your faith and trust. In that gospel. The gospel. The finished work of Jesus Christ, the gift of God. A public confession. As I said, I stood before the church the next day and announced. I stood before my family, my grandmother, my brother, Joe Whitmore. I believe was he was there, I'm not sure. But Joe Caswell, and maybe my grandfather. I knelt down and confessed I was receiving Christ as my Savior. And then, the following week, I made a public confession of, of act of being saved by being baptized, the death, burial, and resurrection. And that stood against and away from the Roman Catholic religion that I grew up with. At what point will a baby open up his mouth and say, I have received Christ? So infant baptism does nothing. For there's no mouth and there's no heart. Is made unto salvation. Faith and heart with vocal and mouth. A baby can't do that. A dog cannot do that. A cat cannot do that. Now salvation is not. Now notice that the words, events, and people we have not seen in the Bible way of salvation. There is no church mentioned in the gospel that we discovered in Corinthians. There is no church mentioned here in Romans 10. The church is for people who have gotten saved and need to grow. The church is not for lost people. There has been no priest mentioned. And yet the only priest there is for salvation, a later study for someone who just got saved, is Christ our high priest, but that that comes later. That's 
from the sincere milk of the word that when you talk about high priest in Christ, that would be, you know, chewing on hamburger and a baby, newborn's not ready for that. There's also been no idols or imagery. You leave that. You confess as a sin, say, Lord God the Father, silently. You're not confessing to a priest. You're confessing to God, to Jesus Christ. Say, Lord God, I'm leaving those idols. I'm leaving those statues. I'm leaving the beads. I'm leaving the magazines. And I am going to trust you, God, Jesus, who is alive and well. There has been no baptism. Baptism comes after salvation. And there is no charity by man. There is never God giving to man salvation by man giving him money, cash, credit, goods, gems. There is not one man in this salvation that we're talking about receiving Christ. Has he ever walked old ladies across the street? Has he ever given food to the homeless people? Has he ever bought shoes for kids? There is none of that. And there's no family to salvation. What I mean is your family can't save you. Your mom can't save your soul. Your dad can't force you into salvation. Your grandparents, they're saved. Amen. Glory to God. But their salvation cannot save you. Science and education is not involved. What do you need to know? You need to know that God died on that cross. God's blood was shed because the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. That you are a sinner. That involves no science. Maybe a little learning of education what sin is. But there is no pieces of paper to hang on the wall to say, look, I'm saved. I've probably is somebody out there, but there's never been, I've seen anybody giving a piece of paper saying, on this day you got saved. Now there's a baptismal certificate. And what does science do for salvation? Nothing. Science hasn't even caught up to the Bible yet. The rules and regulations, the law is not present when we look at salvation. It's not there at all. So there are things absent when it comes to someone getting saved that do not need to be there. Again, let me go through the list again, the eight things. Church. Now you may get saved in a church, but the church is not going to save you. The priest, the idols, the imagery. The baptism, the charity by man, family, science, and education, rules and regulation, or the law. Romans 10, 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him, that's Jesus, shall not be ashamed. For the scripture saith, Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. What is that? That's the rock of the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. A chain. It says, whosoever. John three sixteen. whosoever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever. Now when you're out there in a public ministry, you're going to deal with males and females. There's no other. You're going to deal with white people, brown people, black people, yellowish people, red people. You're going to deal with people who are brunettes, blondes, redheads, blondes. Black hair, young, old, in between. 
and it's whosoever anybody whatsoever. The public ministry is for whosoever. And it says believe it. If you know what concrete and rebar is, rebar is metal that is put in concrete to make it strong, make it more stable. It strengthens it. It makes it, if concrete did not have the steel in it, it would crack and break and have no foundation. And the rebar of salvation is belief. You sure can't get in with unbelief. Again, John chapter 3, verse 36. Look at the unbelief. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. If there is no belief, there is no further going any further. And then what about unbelief in whosoever? Revelation 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. That whosoever is the ones that have no belief in Jesus Christ, the Son, at all. And they are cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Today, in the church age, for believing on Jesus Christ. They rejected it. The contrast is... Romans 3.16 and, Rom and Romans chapter 10, Revelation 20, verse 15. John 3.36, the, the second part of that verse speaks about those of Revelation 20, verse 15. And then it says on him. Who's the him? It's Jesus Christ and no one else. It also says not a shame. Of what? Confessing with your mouth. And yet every Christian has been ashamed at one time or another to someone about Jesus Christ and even myself. But what about when we do get the glory in New Jerusalem by Jesus Christ? Will we ever again be ashamed before the throne of God and before the throne of Jesus, before the angels, the cherubim? The four and twenty-four elders. Will we ever, ever again, when sin and death and hell and Satan has been put off the lake of fire for all eternity, will we be ashamed? Never. Never. Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. There is no difference whosoever. No boundary lines. You know, we've got 50 states in the United States and we got lines for those states. We've got countries. There's a line that, that separates Canada from the United States. There's a line that separates the United States from Mexico. And yet when it comes to salvation, there is no line. Jew or Gentile Greek. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's no lines of what color or what sex you are. The Jewish person, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Greek, Gentiles, everybody else who's not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's to whosoever. In Romans 10, 12, we get the definition of whosoever. The same Lord over all is the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. So there it is. Is rich unto all that call upon him. What riches do salvation give you? I can only give you a very basic list, but number one, we don't go to hell. Number two, our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We have reservations by Jesus Christ, by the blood, by the gospel, set forth in heaven. If we were to die, the Bible says to be absent 
from the body and present with the Lord. If the rapture happened, those that remain should be caught up together with those who have died and slept in the Lord. And then together we will meet Jesus Christ. We will have a place called New Jerusalem. We will be getting a new body, no pain, no sorrow, no more sin. Revelation 22, the Bible speaks about God wiping away our tears. We will have a time in our life in glory that nothing we do will ever be wrong. We will not have to think about our actions. We will not ever have to say we're sorry. We will never have to have to repent again. And that's just the beginning, a very narrow stretch of what the riches of God is for those that believe on Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever, there it is again, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. And whosoever. Anybody, everybody. Jews, Greeks, males, females. And those who can't tell what they are. Whatever nationality, whatever you are, race, creed, religion. God can save Americans. He can save the Polish. He can save the African. He can save the Oriental. Who shall ever call upon? That's with a voice. That's with the mouth. That's vocal. Stretching forth your lips to God. Now understand, if you've got a person who's deaf and can't speak, they will have ability, they will have a way to, to profess Jesus Christ by sign language, by writing. The name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? It's not Mary. It's not Allah. It's not you. The name of the Lord. Let's look at it again. Romans 10. Verse 9. And thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Make sure that person who is coming to Christ acknowledges Jesus Christ. And who Jesus Christ is as we've done the study. Shall be saved. There is no other way. To get to heaven. Jesus said. Roman, I mean John 14. I am the way. The truth. And the light. No man cometh unto the father. But. By. Me. You cannot do it. Anything else. There is absolutely no other way of proof. God will take no other means. God will accept no other way. But he will take part in what Jesus Christ, his son, himself, has done. You got to have the person step out from his religion. You got to have the, the person step out in his science. You got to have him step out of his education. And you got to have him step in Jesus Christ to be saved. Now we're going to close there, but we'll pick up in Romans 10, 14. And we're going to get more into the public ministry. And we're going to look at those who do the public ministry. And what we're to do, what we're not to do as we go through this whole study. So, I hope you will take part in the other 13 videos, 13 audios, their YouTube, SoundCloud, my uh, Twitter account, and others. Get them, listen to them, get them out, send them friends, email them. Put them out on other pages. Put them on your pages. I give you free right to use these videos for good. For the glory of Jesus Christ. That people may learn about the salvation of Jesus Christ. That people may learn how to properly tell people about Jesus Christ. These videos are for the glory 
and for the honor and the exalting of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, my Savior. Help me get them out, please. 